So today I'm coming with a, a random vlog on embracing infertility. Um, I get asked this question all the time in my inbox. Like people flood my inbox, whether it be on YouTube or on my email. People are always sending me messages asking me like, how do I deal with infertility? Like, how, how does that make you feel knowing that you're infertile? Hi guys, The Infertile Files. A lot of my followers on Twitter, um, they talk to me a lot and there have been a lot of ladies that are having a hard time with coming to terms of knowing that they're infertile and the possibility of them having children of their own is like very slim and you know they, they don't want to adopt a child they would much rather have a biological child of their own um, I mean there's just it's so big it's such a big community when it comes to infertility because it could be something as little as having PCOS or something as major as having um, to use donor eggs and not knowing if that process will even work for you. Um, I know when I found out that I was infertile, I was like, what? Okay, seriously? Like, can somebody tell me what what's really going on? I mean, I've known that I was infertile um, I, I, I just knew that I was infertile my periods have always been all over the place since the day I had my first one um, it, it was just it was a lot okay and I knew that I was infertile when I met my husband at the time we were just you know talking this was before we even started dating um, I told him you know there's a 50-50 chance that you might not ever be a biological father. You might not ever be able to hold the title of being a father. Because I don't know if I can bear children. You know, because I knew that I had infertility problems. Um, with that being said, my husband, he had no problems with that. He was like, you know, whatever we need to do, let's go ahead and do it. You know, it doesn't bother me whatsoever. Even if that means us having to adopt a child, I'm down. You know, um, so we went through the process of trying to figure out my whole infertility thing. It took three different PCMs to finally figure out that I had PCOS. Um, a year prior to finding out that I had PCOS, I had a hysteroscopy and a DNC not pregnant um, procedure done because this OB wanted me to have it done she said that I had fibroids on my ovaries and I had um, um in my uterine wall so I was like okay whatever you know you're supposed to be the professional come to find out what she did that procedure that she did had nothing to do with my infertility it was just to put money in her pocket so ladies if they tell you anything about you know you need to have this procedure and that procedure and all this other stuff done make sure you know you know that that's for real for real and it's going to help you with your infertility because if it does not help you with your infertility then you shouldn't be doing it that that's just me and my take on it like if i had to go back and redo it i would have never had that surgery done because when i had my procedure done prior to having my son um because i had the procedure done in july and i got pregnant with my son in september when I had that procedure done, I had to have another hysteroscopy done. Yeah, another hysteroscopy done. Had I listened to, you know, what my mom was telling me about, like, looking stuff up, then I wouldn't have had to have that same procedure done twice. Um, I had to have my tubes open because they were blocked or, you know, cut off or clamped. or They were something, okay? I don't know if I was born that way or if they did that over time. I'm not sure, but he had to open my tubes because they were blocked. Dealing with infertility is not the easiest thing. Like, I have friends that say stuff like, you know, I ain't trying to get pregnant. I ain't trying to have no kids. Girl, you lucky that you infertile. You ain't got to worry about taking birth control and da-da-da-da-da. 
ain't nobody trying to hear all that especially somebody that is trying to have a child you know what i'm saying or has had such a hard time getting pregnant and staying pregnant like you don't say that to people because you don't know their story like what would possess you to say something like that especially when you know the person that you talk to is infertile and is having problems having kids and keeping children like you should be slapped for saying some stuff like that and i know i'm not the only one raise your hand if you victim to it mm -hmm. embracing infertility is hard in itself um it takes a lot of power and a lot of strength to be able to press on knowing that you're infertile and knowing that your chances of having a child are slim and you know all the odds are against you and all this other stuff i mean when i was going through my phase of infertility where you know me and my husband were trying i was doing the injections and everything else i'm not gonna lie i was a little bit weary but you know i prayed every day every day i prayed and it, it finally happened for me and i'm sure that you know every woman if they want to have a child will have a child it's knowing your options knowing the doctor and trusting that doctor to know what they need to do to help you with your infertility if, if, if you understand what I'm saying, like instead of beating around the bush and, you know, them playing a the bullshit card and wanting to have this surgery and that surgery and this procedure and that procedure and all this different medicine and all this other stuff that has nothing to do with your infertility and it's not going to help you at all, then why the hell am I doing it? I mean, that that that's my take on it. Infertility is not a joke. A lot of people take it as a joke. It is not a joke. It it deals with a lot of people's lives it deals with my life um i i applaud any woman that has gone through infertility hell i applaud myself because i went through it and i you know became a mother so being infertile puts you on a whole nother level as far as strength because you have to deal with so much and you have to do medicine and you have to have surgeries and you have to go to doctor's appointments and you have to deal with negativity and all of this different stuff, you know, just to have a baby. So the first thing you need to do is embrace the fact that you are infertile and know that with God, anything is possible. My doctor will tell you in a heartbeat. He ain't, you know, he's not like, you know, I, I do this, that, and the third. Yes, he's one of the best in the country, but he knows his stuff. There's a difference. You have to find a doctor that knows their stuff, especially the ones that are dealing with infertility. You have to, because if not, you're going to be dealing with infertility for so long, so long. And then you're going to be like, was it really worth it? all of this and then me still not having a child you know like just embrace the infertility embrace it don't fight it and try to make it seem like everything is okay and you know i don't need a doctor to get pregnant i don't need this i don't need that i'll get pregnant eventually when you know that you need the help like you have to you have to know that you 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 need that help that's the first step of infertility like it took me forever to understand that but once you get that down you good to go but i'm a quick rambling and you know all that jazzy stuff any other topics that you guys want to talk to me about leave them in the comment section below i'm gonna try my best to um get videos out as i can I actually have a migraine right now, which is why I have my glasses on and my eyes are kind of squinting a little bit. So I'm going to get off of here and I'm going to go and take my medicine and I'm going to lay my down. So I will see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys are all doing awesome. Please keep me in your prayers. Prayer is always a good thing. Um, keep your head up, ladies. All the ones that are dealing with infertility, all the ones that are TTCing right now keep your head up keep hope alive don't forget to thumbs up this video if you haven't already make sure you subscribe to my channel 
Leave your comments, questions, and concerns in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye. I'm at McDonald's and she was like, I just want a soda. She reaches down and she grabs this darn, uh, what is that thing My called? container full of change. Don't be a hater. <laughs> and y'all talk about me. Y'all talk about me. This is not ratchetness. This is realness. Okay.